Hello friends, it's Carla here from Creative Scrapbooker Magazine and today we're going to make a beautiful foiled butterfly card. We're featuring the Thermoweb Magical Monarch stamp set as well as some coordinating products. So here we have the toner card front. This is the Lavish Lace. We've got the Magical Monarch stamp set which also includes some flowers. We then have the die set, which has the inside you can cut out or the outsides and the flowers and then the butterfly stencil. So there's lots of different combinations you could use. We're also using the fancy foils in the brilliant blue, which is beautiful. And here's a look at the card we will be making. So this beautiful lavish lace toner card front is just gorgeous. There's two different styles in the package. I cut a piece of the fancy foil to fit over the card front and I'm just heating up my mini mink machine. Uh, with the toner card fronts you do want to use a laminator in order to apply the foil and I'm just trimming the foil off with my Ulfa cutting scissors. The craft and carrier sheets from Thermoweb Decofoil are very handy. You can use them as kind of a splat mat, and then you can also use them to uh, use as a carrier sheet through your laminator. Here's the big reveal, which is the exciting part when that beautiful foil sticks to any of the toner on the toner card fronts. You're then left with a negative image, and these are great for adding to the full toner card sheets there. And you can see that then you end up with a negative effect for another card. I have a Prism Studio scallop rectangle die, which we're going to cut out this toner card front. And I have some of the iCraft Thermoweb purple tape there. Here's a pretty a look at that pretty die cut. I also have a bone folder from Prism Studio. It's a triangular shape and it's a really nice weight and great for creasing your cards. Here's some Prism Studio card stock. This one is a really pretty blue called Lupine. We're going to apply it to our card base with some of the Thermoweb iCraft tape runner. We'll also apply that tape runner to the foiled card and then we've got some really pretty layers for the base of our card. I've grabbed the Solar White Prism Studio 12x12 paper as well as the stencil that coordinates with that Monarch butterfly and we're going to add a little bit of that purple tape just along the edges. And I have some Distress Oxides that I'm going to create a little bit of an ombre effect using the Prism Studio ink blending brush. The Distress Oxides blend really nicely and if you ever struggle with getting a blend with inks, it's a really good one to use. So I'm just applying the lighter color on top and the darker on the bottom and then doing the same with the blue butterfly. All I do is wipe my brush off in between. I don't wash them. I don't have different ones for different inks. I just wipe them off with a cloth. And here's a look at that pretty butterfly. We are going to go ahead and stamp the detail stamp on top. And because we're going to add a little bit of embossing powder, what we want to do is add some embossing ink. So we've got the Ranger embossing ink. It's a clear sticky ink so that the embossing powder will stick. But the embossing powder that I've chosen that you'll see here in a moment is more of a clear glittery powder so I do still want some color and I want the ink to show through. So I'm using the Distress ink now so that it's a 
stronger, brighter color on top of the oxide. But because we added the embossing ink first, our ink stays wet enough that our Wow Wanderlust embossing powder is going to actually stick to it. When I'm heating up my heat gun, I usually go to the back of the paper first just so I don't blow any of the embossing powder off. And then I heat the front. And as soon as you see that embossing powder change color and get more brighter, you'll know that it is done. You don't want to overheat your powder. And there we go, that beautiful glittery effect with the embossing powder. We're going to cut out our butterflies with the outline dies. And we can just add a little bit of that purple tape to hold the dies on, run it through the die cut machine, and there we have beautiful embellishments. I love the layers of the embossing powder as well as the ink over that stenciled background. We're going to now take our tulip flowers and we're going to do some no line coloring. So I've grabbed the Antique Linen Distress Oxide. It's a really light color. You could use the ink as well. And we are doing this on some Bristol Smooth cardstock. And this works really well with these click art markers from Zebra Pen. So you simply click the top of the marker to use it and it there's no cover. It is actually quite neat. They don't dry out and um, they really work beautifully whether you're writing or you are doing watercolor with them. So if you're watercoloring, you want to trace around your stamped image and add a little bit extra of ink where you want a little bit darker color. So it's a very quick way to watercolor. You don't need to worry too much about shading. Wherever you've left the darker ink is where it's going to stay a little bit darker. So I added the lighter green ink, kind of tracing all over, and then I added a little bit of the darker ink just down at the bottom, and you can see how you get that variegated effect. And the same here with the purple flowers. I'm adding the purple around, adding a little bit extra ink where I want some darker areas and some shadows. And then I just use my water brush to pull this out. I'm just going ahead and tracing in the stems with the light green marker to finish off these flowers and you can see what a pretty effect that is. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment on. I love this sentiment. I think it's beautiful. There's several that you can choose from and I'm going to stamp it with the Distress Ink that coordinates with the butterfly that we had already stamped with the Stu Prism Studio stamping block. Now we can use the Ulfa. They're actually stitching scissors but they work really well for fussy cutting so we're going to trim out our sentiment in a bubble effect now we can add a little bit of the oxide ink over top to color the cardstock and to soften that ink color as well and we're going to use the thermoweb icraft foam squares first we're going to put on our tulips and we're going to pop up the tulips, but actually glue the bottom of the flowers uh, directly down to the card front. So I'm just using the iCraft liquid glue. And here we have our sentiment and we can choose the smaller foam squares from the package and just apply those along the sentiment strip. Now for our butterflies, because this is such a nice thick cardstock, that solar white from Prism Studio, it has a lot of weight to it and we can just bend up the wings of the butterflies to give them some dimension. 
and glue the body directly down to the card. And now we're going to add some beautiful Robin's Nest Creative Dew Drops. These are an acrylic drop. There's lots of different colors and styles that you can get on their website. And I'm just color coordinating them and adding a few to each of the stamped elements on the card. And the Ultra Bond Liquid Glue from iCraft is really great for putting those on. So here's a look at our finished card. We've got our foiling, we've got our beautiful colors, and we've got some glitter from our pretty embossing powder. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you have an awesome day.